Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Christian Buddy Podcast. I am now graced in the presence of Leisha. Welcome to the podcast, Leisha. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. Now, I'm going to jump straight into the podcast. And the first question is, what drew me, sorry, what drew me to you was your positive attitude. And I'm all about positivity. And that ties into your 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 job your your career because you are a a life coach do you right. do you mind expanding on on that area of your life please yeah no problem so i am a success coach for high achieving millennials particularly ones that are going through points of transition like they just got married they're having their first baby or they're going into a more senior role professionally so something where they're like okay this is shaking me I'm not quite sure what to expect I'm not sure if I've got what it takes to succeed so it's something that's creating some discomfort which can also then create self-doubts limiting beliefs of like you know fear fear of failure or you know concerns about performance and um you know insecurities all of that stuff and so positivity really plays into that and the way that i hold positivity is not so much like looking through rose-colored glasses at the world and saying like let's just look on the bright side and that kind of thing it's more saying like okay i'm seeing this situation as bad or unfortunate or scary and shifting to say like, okay, what are some gifts or opportunities in this situation that I'm labeling as bad that mm. might make it not as bad, not as scary, not as intimidating? Yeah. Wow, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of information. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to digest. And I, I thought I would, you know, the Christian Body Show is a little bit different, and I thought we'd do a bit of an icebreaker. Sure. And. It's a little bit of a silly game. Uh, it's going to maybe last for 20 seconds. So I hope the audience enjoys it. So basically, um, the first one to blink. So we're going to look straight at the camera. And the first okay. one, the first one to blink loses. So um, maybe this will be a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'll give us a countdown. So And then we'll just, uh, yes, go, go ahead, I guess. So three, two, one. All right, so I can only see the camera. I can't see if you're blinking, so. I blinked. Oh, you blinked, all right. I all blinked, right. yes. Okay, all right. As soon as you start talking about, I, can, I can't see you blinking. I'm like, I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> Thanks, that's your trick. That's why you like that game, you figured it out. All right, so I'm undefeated so far. One, one, one and zero, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't lost that, so. Uh... Nice, nice. Maybe that's a psychological thing. You start talking about blinking and then the person's like, now I have to blink. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You're doing like a Jedi mind trick on people. Oh, not really. I'm just, yeah. I'm just uh, <laughs> taking it easy. You're just, yeah. You're just good. You're just good at it. Awesome. <laughs> so I read a bit about your background as well. So can you explain to me uh, the saboteur? Is it, how do I pronounce it? Is it saboteur or sabot saboteur? It's saboteur, but I do like your pronunciation of it, so, okay. <laughs> but it's called, yeah, saboteur, which is basically how ways that we tend to self-sabotage. So you can look at it as like saboteur, sabotage, compromising one showing up with their best qualities. Yeah, right. I actually took the test and okay. I, the traits that st stood out for me most was stickler and hyperachiever. Yes. Nice. So, High five. I've five. got those too. Yay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it kind of makes sense because like I work my, my nine to five job is I work in the office and I was reading some of the traits. I think it's of the stickler and you, you, it's like, you can always do things better. And I feel like, but is that a bad thing though? Is it, I don't know. Is that, is that really a bad thing to want to be doing things always want to be doing like, I guess we don't want to be stuck in that perfectionism mindset. Like right. Yeah. So what you're catching on to is absolutely right. It's like these qualities, these saboteurs are actually extensions of our strengths. So you having that stickler or the perfectionist, which I have as well, it means that we are really good at noticing details. We take great pride in things being done really well. It becomes a saboteur when it's taken to the extreme. It's like those strengths become perverted and then cause anxiety and frustration where rather than 
and thinking like, okay, only 20, only 20% 20 of things have to be just right. It's like 80% or even more, everything has to be just right. And you're spending excess time and energy and emotion making things just right, just so obsessing over, was that good enough, ruminating over it? That's when it becomes a saboteur because really only 20% of things need to be just right. The rest can go in the 80% bucket where good enough is good enough. And that stickler saboteur has a hard time of letting that go. Yeah, absolutely. And for people listening at home, because this all fits into uh, uh, this is all fitting into a, a, a model, isn't it? Like these. So, just do you mind giving some context for people at home? They may be a bit confused. What are we talking about, saboteur? And yeah. what does this all this mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. So, Shirzad Shamin, he founded the company Positive Intelligence. Also, wrote a New York Times bestselling book of the same title, Positive Intelligence. He's a Stanford lecturer. And so it's all based on looking at, are we operating from the region of our brain where there's patience, positivity, creativity, compassion, or are we operating from the left side of our brain, which is driven by you know being very analytical and it's where these saboteurs live. So it's like, we have two brains. There's one that's like the dark side that has stress, frustration, anxiety, all of that. And then there's the right side, which is the sage or the light side. And the light side, you know, it's kind of like if you're into Star Wars, there's the dark side, the light side, your Darth Vader brain or your Jedi brain. And so when you engage that right side of the brain and you're able to strengthen it over time, then when something happens, you're able to interpret it differently rather than seeing it as a threat going into fight or flight or, you know, being hijacked or triggered. You're able to strengthen the three core muscles for mental fitness, one of which which is identifying, okay, this is a saboteur that's come in that's telling me that this report, I need to stay up at all hours of the night to get this report just right. That's saboteur versus sage of like, you know what, I know that this is important, but good enough is good enough. And what can I do to be compassionate for myself? I'm only human or to get curious about, you know what, what would be okay about just submitting this as it is and knowing like I've done my best, good enough is good enough and letting myself get a good night's sleep so that I can be rested in the morning or to explore different options to, you know, get curious. So it's just really like, you know, quieting the left region, the saboteur residing area of the brain and strengthening the right region. And Shirzad has done extensive research on it. And it's also based on the past 10 years in neuroscience, neuroscience cognitive behavioral therapy, performance science. So it's based on, you know, so much of the research and also more than 500,000 participants, which includes CEOs, Stanford athletes, people from all different types of professions. So it's very like well-established, well-defined research. Um, it also includes emotional intelligence, like everything. But the beauty is that it's a very simple operating system. And with clients that I've worked with, it is so effective as I'm strengthening their mental fitness. They are just looking at life through completely different lenses. They are not getting hijacked and triggered the way that they used to. And as a result, their performance goes way up. They're using their best traits to their benefit rather than that actually getting in their way, rather than like what's in their head, stopping them from being their best selves, which is the sage, which is in the right part of the brain. Plus their relationships are stronger as a result and they're happier. Wow. I know that's a lot, <laughs> but I get excited about it too, because yeah, it's just it's, so it's, powerful. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, it is powerful. Yeah. And I, and I can see, I, I'm not an expert on the method, but I know myself when I, when, you know, you can, sometimes I step into the self-critical zone and I'm a little bit too critical of myself. And yeah, I think it's a fine balance between being too harsh on yourself and just letting things go. And sometimes, you know, maybe it's better just to let things go and just uh, live, li live your life, you know, for, for, for what it is and yeah. be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, which which leads me into my next question and you touched on mental exercises now i'm a big advocate for meditation and yeah. do you want to expand on that please because yeah i'm, I'm very curious about mental exercises and keeping yeah. them on yeah 
Absolutely. Sure. So the mental exercises are a way to shift from left brain activity to right brain activity. So what you were describing about that inner critic, that's the judge that we all have, the judge of self. I'm not good enough. I'm going to totally bomb this or a judge of others, a judge of situations. So whenever one notices that coming in where, you know, for example, like you, what's an example of something that you have kind of been had that inner critic really loud on recently? Uh, I'm, I'm getting into YouTube and like the editing process. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, yeah, it's very time consuming. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'll just leave it. Or should I fix that? And yeah. And I just get stuck into that mental. Yeah. There you go. So that's a great, great example because you having that hyperachiever and that stickler, then it actually that you, know, you think, okay, well, you know, doing all these things, I'm going to be more successful. It actually keeps you from being as successful as you could be because it hijacks you and says, if you can't do this right, don't even bother. Don't do it unless you know that you can do it right, unless you know that you can succeed and you can make it exactly as you want it to be. So in that way, it actually impedes that success that that high achiever really, really wants because you're letting that judge come in. So a way to quiet that is to do these exercises. And it's quieting the mental chatter by focusing on a singular stimulus. Like it could be a sense of touch, sense of smell, sense of sight. So we can do one together as an example. This is one of the most common ones where it's taking your thumb and your index finger, touching them together and making little circles. You can do it with, you know, just one hand, making these little circles with just enough pressure to feel the ridges on the fingertips. So to really do it right, you have your feet firmly planted on the ground, spine straight, eyes closed to block out other distractions. And we'll do it for 10 seconds. I invite those that are listening to do it with us and just rub your thumb and index finger, little circles for 10 seconds. Each rep is 10 seconds. If a thought comes in, let it go. Thought comes in, let it go. Just focus on the circles and the ridges. And that's time. You look very wow. calm. Wow, I feel really <laughs> relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it cool? <laughs> it so, kind yeah. of puts you into a different state of mind. I mean, right. I guess, yeah. Exactly. A lot of people say, you know, especially those that are really into meditation, they say it's like a portal to that meditative state yeah. and you can do it anywhere. You know, you're sitting there, you don't have to be like, okay, I've got to go into my meditation corner and meditate for 20 minutes. Cause I'm super stressed out. You could just like do these little circles or, you know, just like focusing on breath, focusing on the air going in and out of the chest, opening and closing, just focus on only that breath. At the beginning, people start to think, am I doing this right or not? Just let those thoughts go. Just let it go. It's natural. Let the thought come in and say, let it go. And then return your focus to that sensation. You can do it too, touching your fingertips to along the palm of your hand, feeling the ridges. Others like doing like the face. They'll like, you know, eyes closed, turn your hand down your face and just feel slowly all of the different sensations or like looking outside or looking in your room, you can like focus on a leaf and just study that leaf as if you've never seen a leaf before. And you're like putting all of your energy on that singular sensation. You can do it when you're eating, like just with that bite of food, eyes closed, focusing only on the sensations. That's really good for people that are also trying to like monitor how much they eat because you get that much more out of the experience and because you're quieting that stress and anxiety, you're not going to then be eating as much because you're actually calming yourself in the process. And so it's, you know, quieting all of that energy and emotion that's, you know, like got you all worked up. Yeah. So, that's cool. cool. I, I recommend yeah. people listening at home to give it a shot because yeah, it's definitely, I'm not really focusing on anything at the moment. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. It's a good, I'm going to give it a shot. So next time, so, so what you're saying is, so next time I'm getting self-critical or I'm getting this into this mindset, I can do one of these exercises. So breathing or, um, so rubbing the, 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 the finger with, 
uh, or rubbing the or just putting your hand on the face, all these yeah. little exercises. So there you go, guys. Like these are like practical tips that you can take out of this podcast on how to center yourself, realign yourself. And yeah, yeah that's 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 fantastic. That's great. And it's great too, if you do it like before a big meeting, then, you know, that gives you some PQ charge. You can, PQ is positive intelligence quotient, and it's the weight of one's positive energy versus negative energy. And so you could even, you know, do it like before a meeting, you think about a battery, like, you know, you're going to use your phone. You want to make sure it has some charge. You're going into a meeting. You want to make sure you have some PQ charge. You've charged up that right part of the brain before the meeting. And clients will tell me their meetings go better when they do that, right. or they're going to have a you know, difficult conversation with someone they do some pq reps and the more that you do throughout the day usually it's recommended to do like a hundred of these which is really easy you can do it when you're washing your hands you can do it when you're in the shower just focusing on the feeling of the water going over you each one is only 10 seconds so it's easy to get them in and what you're doing is you're increasing activation in the right region of the brain and after six to eight weeks, it actually shows more gray matter in the right region of the brain from those that are doing this with great, you know, consistency. Wow. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's, that's really nice to hear. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. It's very and cool. I guess, uh, I want to touch on, uh, I want to touch on patience. I want to touch on that area of patience because I know that, I, I guess I, I wouldn't say that I struggle with patience, but it's still, it's a, it's, I feel like life is a journey and you shouldn't be trying to rush through anything. And what's, what does patience mean for you? Patience. Yeah, that is such a really valuable topic. And it's something that I have had challenges with. I have two young children. And so patience is often challenged, um, mm. at least, you know, for me personally, and Patience is really about, you know, just being able to have, I think patience and compassion are closely tied because if you're like, okay, I'm getting irritated at this person or this situation to, you know, engage that right part of the brain and then to kind of ask questions like, okay, you know, what's happening here? What's causing this to happen? Like if we're stuck in traffic and we're, you know, really frustrated because we want to get to our destination, then thinking like, you know what, let's get curious here. There could be more going on than we know. There could be an accident. There could be someone that, you know, is driving really slow and holding up traffic because maybe they just lost a loved one and they're distracted. Like, you know, getting curious, that compassion then can drive more patience of just like grounding ourselves in, you know what, this is what I can control. This is what I can't control and being able to surrender to what we can't control because patience is often like, I want to make something happen faster or sooner. And there's this urgency. So if we kind of, you know, get curious about like, okay, what's within my control here? What's not, then we're able to take some of that weight off of it. And that can increase patience. Yeah, I guess returning back to those exercises, I mean, those exercises can help you overcome that impatient state of the mind, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so that's a practical way you can do that. And I'm kind of running out of things to say, to be honest, um, but I thought I would hand the floor over to you. What, what, uh, what area is most interesting to you in this whole, in this whole positive uh, journey that you're that you're taking at the moment um for me it's been really interesting because in my journey I you know I've had these saboteurs and I've just always thought like I'm very type a and you know I've learned how to kind of be just more calm and grounded but sometimes there'd be a situation that's frustrating I'd have a hard time like getting my body to just relax I could still be like worked up in my head and upset about the situation and trying to get relaxed and, you know, then as my, with my journey as a coach, I've learned techniques to kind of coach myself through, which has been good, but it also was like very much in my head. Yeah. And then with the positive intelligence and the mental fitness strengthening, that was kind of the missing link to actually be able to like strengthen my mental muscles. It's like, if you are physically fit 
and you know you know all that you need to do to exercise and eat well but then there's this huge mountain in front of you and you keep encountering these huge mountains it's like okay i just don't have enough strength and i kept encountering these mental mountains like okay i can deal with the hills no problem you know i've got this but oh, there's another mountain and so increasing that physical fitness helps you get over the mountain and increasing that mental fitness helps me get over those bigger challenges that has been a total game changer for me mm -hmm. it's like especially with my business like new things come up and before my stickler would be like okay if you're not sure you can nail this don't even do that you know it'd be that fear of like failure or falling short of my own expectations and now i'm just like hey you know what i can have that compassion for myself and know I'm not perfect. It's going to be perfectly imperfect. I'd rather do it and go for it and try and learn along the way, kind of building the plane as I fly, than not take that chance because yeah. there's learning there. You know, it's like everything that goes off. I think of the word fail as feeling alive in life. It's experiencing life. And with everything that goes unexpectedly, there is an opportunity for learning or for growth. So to not take chances, chances, you're depriving yourself of those gifts or opportunities to really grow and further yourself personally, professionally, in all areas of life. And I've really learned that myself too, and as well with clients. Wow. I want to I want to direct the conversation into a different into a different way now. And I want to speak about relationships. And I'm a single male, 30 years old at the moment. And I guess what I guess, yeah, the reason why I'm asking this is because I mean, what what, what does what does relationships mean for you? What 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 does yeah, what does that word mean for you? Well, it's interesting because it's such a, a broad it's such term. a broad I know there's a lot yeah. to unpack there, but um yeah, exactly. take the floor, the floor is yours, whatever floats into your mind. I'm happy to hear whatever you have, whatever yeah. you've got. Yeah. Well, as so many have said, relationships start with oneself. Your relationship with self is first and foremost. And that love for oneself, like true unconditional love, knowing that you are worthy of unconditional love. When I work with clients, we do a lot around your inner child and looking at like a picture of when you were a child and seeing the essence of who you were and looking at that child and knowing they are worthy of that unconditional love that can help you connect with it yourself because when we feel like there's something wrong there's something missing then that's going to compromise relationships with ourselves as well as with others so i'd say first really like strengthening it, getting solid and being like, I am awesome and believing it, looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, damn, I am an awesome person. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then that expands to other, you know, other relationships. It's a starting point. But what do you think that as we grow older, we lose that touch of the inner child? Is it, do you think it's because society places all these rules and regulations on us or what do you think that is yeah it's it's those saboteurs it's those saboteurs yeah. judging and saying like you need to be this way there's social media saying well they are showing up this way look at how cool they are look at what they're doing why aren't you doing that and so then it's like oh yeah gosh i need to be you know this person and i need to be more like this less like that and then you know we have these like shadow parts of ourselves where they're the parts that we don't want other people to find out that you know like maybe you know you like to just like dance around your house all the time and just go like crazy but you'd be so embarrassed if someone saw you and others are like you know what i've got that fun playful side i've always been that way but i'm gonna own it and so it's really like looking at what parts have you quieted or do you feel self-conscious about mm. that were there since you were a child or the essence of who you are and looking at like how can i bring that more into my life i talk with clients about like what are three things that you see in your childhood photo and one of my clients Clients, they were like, I had this photo of me on this like Hot Wheels little bike and I totally forgot how much I loved 
riding that bike and I'm like what was happening and they said the wind was going through my hair and they're like I don't have any hair anymore (laughs) (laughs) I'm like that's okay you can still feel it on your face (laughs) and so so they were like yeah you know what I miss that I want that and I'm like okay let's do that how can you bring that into your life and who you are now and they realized they had lost that so reconnecting with parts that we've lost because yeah we don't have our hot wheels anymore we're not you know doing our little pirouettes around the living room anymore but we can still bring that fun spirit in there was one particular person who was working in quality control and they're like well I used to be really fun but I'm in quality control it's very serious I can't be silly and goofy and so you know the coach I was talking to told this client like you know what I challenge you bring in some of that silliness bring in some of that fun And it made such a huge difference because it was this limiting belief that quality control needs to be serious. I need to be serious for people to take me seriously. But as soon as that person started showing more of that fun and upbeat personality, all of a sudden the relationships were stronger because they felt like, wow, this is like a real person that I can connect with and get along well with. And they're being real. I can be real. And people started working better together because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So the more that we show up in that essence and who we are reconnecting with it, like the better it's going to serve us. Give yourself permission to just be you playful out. And yeah, there might be people that are like, whoa, what's gotten into you, but there are (laughs) going to be others that are going to be like, that's who I wanted to see. Mm. You know, you see sometimes people have this like part of their personality where you're like, I wish they would like show that a little bit more. They've got this edginess. There's something under the surface that they're kind of not letting out. And it's so cool when they do that out more and more. Wow. That's yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. You, you touched on, you touched on uh, the shadow and I'm kind of lurking. I'm kind of taking this conversation into the dark side a little bit because I'm not, not, not for anything, but I'm just curious because just from a mental side, you know, yeah, I guess we all have those little things, those little demons or mental things that, yeah, we don't want other people to see, but it's, but it's funny because the mind always plays tricks on you because it's never as bad as what it is. You know, it's like the, the mind always uh, emphasizes the worst case scenario and i think just letting go and being present is such an important thing from for day-to-day life to yeah yeah, to even be happy to to feel happiness because yeah if you're stuck in those 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 mental blocks all the time it's 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 not good you know so Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And it's almost like, you know, if there's stuff that you're trying to keep back, it's almost like, you know, you have a dam and you're trying to like keep plugging holes. You're going along and all of a sudden like, oh, there's another hole that's trying to seep through. So then you're putting all this time and energy and emotion trying to like plug these holes versus you think about if you just let that dam down and you let that water flow the way it's meant to naturally, all of a sudden there is so much energy freed up to be able to focus on other things. Mm-hmm. yeah and what and what what uh what takes up most of your time these days is it the so you, is it your business or yeah do you mind expanding on that yeah so most of the time i'm doing one-on-one coaching or group coaching and so i'm certified through the coactive training institute and my coaching is based on those methods and principles and then i also incorporate the mental fitness um, in partnership with positive intelligence for those clients that kind of you know want to be able to get even more of a, um, you know, like a strong start going, like kind of helping to quiet those years of saboteurs that have told us like, we need to be this way or that way, or, you know, like driving us in certain ways. So it kind of kickstarts the whole coaching relationship really beautifully. And so, yeah, most of my time is with that. And then, you know, I also enjoy being on podcasts such as yours and, I've got family. I have two young children and my husband. So now we're, you know, here all together during the pandemic. Um, And there's, you know, just a lot to to stay busy. Um, But it's also like really looking at what am I spending my time on? Is it bringing joy? Is it not? And, you know, looking at things that have high impact and charge my battery and looking at things that maybe are low impact or battery draining 
and saying, okay, how can I rework this in order to, you know, have that self-care to keep strengthening that mental fitness? Mm. Yeah, just recently, I've come to the realization that I want to start a family. And yeah, as I said, like I'm, I'm single at the moment and I'm not, this is not, a, by the way, this is not an advertisement for people listening. This is just, <laughs> these, these are just my thoughts coming out at the moment. And yeah, that's cool. yeah I think um, I'm ready to kind of take that next step in life. And I'm kind of, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm actually putting that out into the universe and I feel we can keep things in our minds, but if we don't speak them, then we never actually, we don't take the first step to making them happen. So yeah, I yeah. guess um taking the i'm making that realization because that's i guess the next step in my journey of personal development so yeah that's great well there's an openness that comes with that and to tell you a cool story like before my husband and i met then i was like i remember i was on a bus and i was thinking like you know i just i feel good about where i am i had this like journey like i also have a pleaser saboteur and so i was very much what other people expected of me or what i felt that they expected of me very much kind of that good girl stereotype. And then in my 20s, I'm like, you know what, maybe part of that's not really me. What if I want to be more edgy or do this? And so I really like came into who I was. And then in my late 20s, I'm like, you know what, I feel solid. Like, this is who I am. I've, you know, it's like, I was like a little bit more proper. And then I, you know, went on the pendulum and then came back again. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm so secure in who I am. And I know who I am and what I bring to another person. Like, I'm ready to find love. I remember thinking, like, I am ready for love. I felt it so strongly. And then we had my husband, who, or my future husband, within that same time period, he'd been talking to a friend saying how much he wanted to find love. And his friend's like, you've got to make a list, make a list of 10 things that you absolutely must have in a partner. And he made that list of 10 things so that it was like so clear, like these are the must haves. And that set him up for having his radar on like, this is what I've got to have rather than like, oh, that one looks good. Maybe I'll check that out. Oh, that one looks good. He was like super laser focused. And that really helped helped him hone in on who would be right, who wouldn't be right. And with interest days after those moments for both of us, then our lives coincided. Like we met and um, it was just, we both knew so much of who we were, who we wanted in a partner that we knew right away, I have found this person. When I was saying goodbye to him that night, I'm like, I found him. I finally found him. And later, like months later, his friend was like, Hey, you don't know this, but Andres called me that night and he's like, you won't believe this bro, but I found the person I'm going to marry. And he's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know. It's weird. I can't explain it, but I found her. And so like, wow. that's how powerful this stuff is. You just like be who you are, know who that is, be grounded in it, know based on who you are, what the right person is for you. And, and that's going to put that energy out there. So you knew, you knew immediately that it was, that it was, that it was on, it was, that it was yeah. like, yeah totally yes wow that's that's amazing because you, because usually you hear in you know you hear a lot of uh negativity you know in the in the dating world it's like oh they're not for me he or she is not for me you know but yeah. that's that's a that's a re that's really refreshing hearing your story because that's it's almost like the the fairy tale it's almost like uh yeah love at first sight you don't hear about that that's very that's very rare and i think I think you're right because you've got to be laser focused and you've got to know what you want in life and the universe will help you. I think the universe will always have your back. Right. Totally. But you've got to know. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to be there with an intent and you've got to, you've got to know what you're looking for. So I'm going to take those tips from you. So I'm, I'm going to implement yeah. them. So we'll see. Awesome. <laughs> maybe maybe next time we speak, I'll be married, but I, I'm just, uh, um, yeah. so yeah. no, nah, I agree. What's crazy though is, is like, it's not even excitement. It's like a sense of like being home. Like I've arrived, I'm home. There's this peacefulness. And I've talked to friends and my sister where they've had similar experiences. And there's just like this peacefulness of like, yep, this is it. Like I'm, I'm home. I've arrived. It's not like, oh my gosh, this person is so amazing. I can't wait to spend another day with them. It's like, yeah, I found it. This is, this yeah, is good. This is it. I'm done. Yep. I found them check yeah it's like a subtle knowing it's like yeah. you're not yeah 
Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we've all had those relationships where it's like, oh my gosh, this person's like so exciting and so cool and so fun. I want to like keep hanging out with them. It's like we're getting a high off of it. And that's sometimes a little bit different because maybe that's like bringing a side of ourselves that we want to experience more of. And so it's like there's something that feels kind of like cool and fun about it, or it's like an adventure or like, you know, being on vacation where things are new and different, but it's not necessarily that same place of like, comfort and groundedness and like yeah you know what we're just we're but this is it you know it's a different experience and it's amazing mm. and it's yeah. it's like you've known the person all your life which many people say but those that have known you know have been happily married for years are like yeah you know it was just so obvious it was such a good fit that they were like done <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's um, it's crazy. It's crazy how the world works. It's um, because the world works in mysterious ways, and yeah, uh, it does. I know it works in like crazy ways. So, do you want me to level this up for you? Yeah, tell me, tell me. The relationship. Okay, so this person that I, you know, like met up with and it was like that okay this person's the one for me he was actually someone that I had known 20 years before we had been in school together and I had a huge crush on him and then he went to we went to like separate schools after like a year or two of being at the same school I just always remembered him and I'm like gosh he just seemed so nice and so cool and so then I was like 20 years later, I was at a barbecue and I was talking to some friends and I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I, I want to find someone I'm so ready. And I met this guy, you know, back in school who was like Chilean. I remember he was like, so like cool, had a twin sister and this and that. And she said, oh my gosh, I was on a train with that guy a couple of weeks ago. She's like, I know who you're talking about. And so-and-so over there is like friends with him. I said, what are you talking about? And so then this mutual friend was like, oh yeah, Andres, he's like a super cool guy. He's like, you know, people love him. If you want, I can set you guys up. So he said like, okay, give me your info. I'll set you guys up. So he then like reached out to Andres and Andres like said, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll meet this girl. We'll see. And I was curious, like, oh, what does this guy like turn out to be all these 20 years later? So we had this date for two weeks from then. The next day, a team came over to my house because I was part of a focus group with a company. Everyone was anonymous, no idea who anyone was. So this group showed up and the person who had come previously wasn't there. And so this other guy, he was like, sorry, my boss couldn't make it. He asked me last minute to step in. So, you know, they were all there together from this, you know, they all said they're from the research company. So it would be anonymous. And they were doing their research focus group with me. And then they left and I was like, that was interesting. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that guy was really nice and he was cute, but I've got a date with undress in two weeks. So, you know, whatever. Then I get a call from this like mutual friend from the barbecue and he's like, Hey, this is really weird. I don't know what just happened, but I guess undress was at your house for something. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, Andres was at your house for some kind of focus group. So here, this guy I was supposed to meet in two weeks from, you know, way back in the day from school had been at my house for this focus group. And I hadn't remembered him because it had been 20 years. He looked kind of familiar, but he then had gone back to his car, was looking through the paperwork, looking through his emails. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go on a date with Leisha. Okay, wait, here's my focus group info. Wait, this girl's name is Leisha. And he thought it was a joke being played on him that it was the same person. And so he had called and it was like confirmed, like, no, this is the same person. This is not a joke. And then Andres called me and he's like, I don't know what just happened, but you know, like we were just both like flipping out over this, how like before fate could bring us together in two weeks, fate brought us together two weeks sooner. And we talk about how it was like, we were meant to have those two extra weeks together. Wow. So it kind of all aligned up. Wow. That's, that's really, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's crazy. And he said, he's never been one to, you know, believe in fate, but he went to a cafe afterwards and he said, he was like telling the waiter, he's like, you won't believe what just happened. <laughs> the waiter, like I thought he was on something, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's crazy how the universe conspires at times, but when we, you know, like, then we ended up, you know, meeting up sooner because we're like, okay, this is just too crazy. And mm. it was that night when I'm like, yeah, this is the person. And, you know, he had that same feeling. We just knew. Wow. That's really nice. It's really cool. Yeah. The, there's a thing like fate, like 
yeah, I guess people see the world differently. Like people see maybe the world more from a scientific lens or from a uh, intuitive lens. And, uh, you know, we're all different beings. We're all just different people walking our life and, and trying to live our life. And I'm a deep believer that, uh, what am I trying to say? I, I'm, a, I'm a deep believer that things don't happen by chance. You know, although science maybe leads it down that pathway that things happen, the world is all um, non-coincidental. But I, I think that the, the world and the universe is so complicated and that there's, you know, things, things happen for a reason, right? I, 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 I believe in that, you know, I, I have faith. And yeah, um, yeah. Well, and it's a matter of, you know, whether or not you believe in, in fate and things happening, the, you know, or a self-fulfilling prophecy, like it's, you know, the fact that there's this openness. And I think that openness to possibilities is really important. And, you know, in relationships, like we can't necessarily control when we meet that person as much as we'd like to say, okay, you know what, next Tuesday, I'm ready to meet the person I'm going to, you know, have my future with, we can't control that. So it's about being open and receptive and knowing that it can happen anywhere, anytime, even people who were job searching, you know, they've talked about how they just have a conversation with, you know, someone random at the grocery store, and it turns out they know someone who knows someone. And it's about like, just being open to experiencing life really fully. And that going back to the earlier part of the conversation that comes from Sage, from that openness, curiosity and the willingness to just explore and be fully present and engaged in life mm, absolutely yeah well i think i might end the conversation there leisha it's been it's been absolutely amazing speaking with you and you. for those listening at home we've given you a lot of practical information we've we've even given a bit of personal information in, into our into relationship <laughs> lives and i'm definitely going to find if i'm gonna if i'm gonna be looking for a soulmate or something like that i'm going to fine tune i've got to be laser focused so i'm going to take yeah. that into consideration and how can people connect with you if people want to reach out to you and work with you how can how can that how does that yeah how, how does yeah. that work thanks for asking so i have a website and it's coach leisha l-i-s-h-a so they can find me on the website. I'm also happy to offer a free coaching session for those that want to have a taste for coaching, see if we'd be a good fit working together. And on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at coach underscore Leisha. And then also my um, Facebook page is coach Leisha. And I have a YouTube channel um, that is coach Leisha. And I have episodes um, that are you know short episodes love from an, an extra dose of love for your day and it's love from Leisha. thank you very much and thanks guys for listening please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast thank you absolutely thank you